Welcome to GCN Show from Velodrome to Play Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, are cyclists too obsessed with weight? Potentially devastating state of affairs. We have also got Mathieu van der Poel not winning a bike race. Group Strava Art, who even knew that was even a thing? And the most unbelievable change of career for a pro cyclist. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that not all pro cyclists are puny, weak, and the last person you'd want on your side in a fist fight. No, one has just taken the leap from the peloton to, wait for it, cage fighting. <laughs> hey, yes, honestly, Elizabeth Rodriguez of Mexico is, according to my mixed martial arts news, one of my favorites, Dan, <laughs> uh, now one fight in to what looks to be a promising career. I was thinking maybe we should send the article the way of Nasser Buhani. We'd be well up for that. That is a very good point. Uh, we also learned this week that you can now own a Colnago that is probably the fastest, lightest bike in the world, but unfortunately you can't ride it or even touch it. No, so Colnago have just launched a C64 NFT, which I confess I hadn't got a clue. You had to look it up. I did, it? yeah. So apparently this is a one-of-a-kind artwork that uses blockchain technology. Uh, anyway, you can own it. Uh, you can bid on it now. I think the reserve price is just under $8,000. That made good. it sound like I didn't have to look it up. I did. And now one rider who pushed the limits of a real-life Colnago at the weekend was Fernando Gaviria on stage two of the Giro d'Italia. He had a rather unfortunate miscommunication with a teammate, would you believe, and somehow kept it upright after leaning against the barriers at about 70 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Do you reckon he just got his left and his right mixed up? Quite possibly. Yeah, that Something sounds... got mixed up, that's Basically, for sure. yeah. Uh, now, our main topic this week is a serious one. Are cyclists too obsessed with their weight? In too many cases, the answer is yes. Now, we've taken a close look at incidences of eating disorders amongst pro cyclists in a GCN video we put out a couple of years ago, but we were motivated to talk about it again today after one of our commentators on GCN Plus recently got a message from a viewer who was upset that they'd said a rider had started performing a lot better since losing a fair amount of weight. Mm. And you can understand that viewer's opinion because, well, there are a lot of athletes out there dealing with disordered eating, and there are even more people out there who could go down that route uh, with that kind of encouragement, I guess. Lose weight, go faster. Yeah, so is this a taboo subject though. It's kind of hard to say because on the flip side, when riding up hills, power to weight ratio is really important. And so many pro cyclists are very light, as light as they can be pretty and much. And they always will be, yeah. However, for a lot of cyclists, we're doing it for reasons other than winning bike races. We were when we were racing, it seems, <laughs> didn't it? Uh, it might be sheer enjoyment for you, but it might also be for health reasons. And I guess weight loss could be a big part of that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. We regularly see posts on the GCN app from people who are rightly proud of how cycling has helped them to get fit and healthy and lose weight at the same time. Because there's no getting away from it. Obesity is linked to a higher rate of premature death. So unequivocally, we should really celebrate people losing excess weight and becoming healthier. Exactly, yeah. What is really tricky though, is tackling weight loss for performance. On the one hand, we've got role models who are visibly extremely lean. Annemiek van Flurten, Primoz Roglic, the winners of the mountainous races will almost never be carrying any excess weight, but so too riders like Mathieu van der Poel. Yeah, on the other hand though, we've got riders like Jakob Fulsang, also one of the world's top riders who had the best season of his life in 2019 at the age of 34. And he attributed that late success to eating more carbs and giving his body more fuel, both in races and training. And he's a rider at the very top of the sport, isn't he? With the world's best sports scientists at his disposal. And he made a seemingly fundamental mistake of underfueling, which just goes to show how easy it is to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm definitely not laying the blame for Fuglsang's troubles here, but when I googled to try and find an interview with Fuglsang that I remembered, this article came up on Cycling News from 10 years ago. His DS at the time said, Fuglsang is too fat to win the Giro. Which is savage. Oh, it's really, ridiculous, isn't, isn't it? it? Irresponsible. Particularly savage, in fact, given what Fuglsang is capable of doing in races like your Lombardia and Liège-Baston-Liège. He's won monuments, yeah. for goodness sake. What does a Grand Tour really matter after well, them? Exactly, so I think there's a real lesson 
for us all in Fubal Sang's career. Why do so many of us want to be climbers? Why do so many of us train to win Grand Tours? And I say that as an ex-pro who did exactly that. And I didn't even race one, and I clearly didn't ever have the attributes to win one, but that was what I focused on. Instead, focusing on the attributes you do have and realizing that there are many different ways to be a good cyclist is the way to go, we think. Yep. Are you tall? Yes. Or stocky and muscular? No. no. Uh, get fast on the flat if you are, though, or on punchy climbs. Who wouldn't want to be Mark Cavendish or Wout van Aert or Anna van der Breggen? Yeah, I think for most of us, being a Filippo Ganna or a Chloe Diamond would be much more fun than being a climber, wouldn't it? True. Uh, and I also think it's worth mentioning Zwift here, okay? Because it's, it's now the only time when I have to weigh myself these mm. days to get an official weight for a Zwift race. And although I don't really like doing that, the fact is, Zwift power will tell you that people can be successful on Zwift at any different weight. So it kind of doesn't really matter too much there either, and there's certainly races to suit all body types. I yeah. Think. Now, if we're honest here, it uh, isn't about performance though. Feeling good about your body has an aesthetic component too, and the ideal cycling physique tends to be one of ripped leg muscles and chiseled cheekbones, which I've come to learn is really more about genetics than diet. Yeah. I've got a bit of personal experience here. Um, we regularly joke about my ankles, do, don't yeah. we? But 10 or 15 years ago, I did used to feel quite sensitive about it. Uh, I wasn't ever super ripped. I could never get super ripped. And I felt like I had fat ankles. So what did you do about that? Well, well they didn't get any thinner, clearly. Um, I had fat ankle role models. I used to scour pro cycling magazines for pictures of riders who had bigger legs. And I also, and we joked about this last week, uh, I paid attention to my shoes and my socks because I found that some shoes and socks gave me better morale than others. It made me feel better about my legs when I looked down. So there we go. I would recommend investing in cycling shoes that make you feel mm. happy. I also used to look for role models. Skinny, lanky, Did you? tall role models. Yeah, because that's my natural build. My whole family's like that. Anyway, so is cycling too obsessed with weight? No, healthy weight loss is a fantastic byproduct of cycling for many people out there, and it's something to be proud of, we yeah. think. Can cyclists become too obsessed with weight, though? Yes. Our recommendation, though, is to just try and concentrate not on being light, but on being fast, going fast, training to be strong, training to be powerful, training to be fast, and then your body weight will just take care of itself. Mm. For further reading or viewing, I'd actually recommend checking out the article on Cycling Weekly, which is written by Joe Laverick, where he goes into much more detail. And also, a video Cy made on this subject, we mentioned it a, a little while ago. Ben King, Grand Tour stage winner, he was really frank, wasn't he, about his battles with disordered eating as a teenager. And we also spoke to a top sports dietitian who specialises in disordered eating, Rini McGregor. Right, let us know what you think as well. Is cycling to too obsessed with weight uh, and also be really interested in how you think that we, GCN, should deal with this subject in the future. Is it okay for us to talk about weight loss, particularly in performance terms, or should we be a little bit more careful? GCN Inspiration now, three prizes available. We're about to award them to our favourite three photos that were uploaded to the GCN app last week. So if you want to get involved, all you need to do is upload your best and most inspirational cycling photos to the app, or they can be videos. They can. Well, one. one this week is a video, Dan. Uh, third place, though, is this cracking photograph winning a plant-based cyclist book, which are now back in stock. I saw on Instagram mm. the other day. Uh, anyway, this one uh, sent in by Luke Meiser. Uh, my son making his way down Highway 39 after we climbed 2,100 metres to Crystal Lake. What an epic day. And that does indeed look like an epic day. It's certainly an epic photo, isn't it? That's fantastic. I haven't ridden roads like that for ages. I haven't been no. abroad for a year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of want to fly abroad again, but it uh, doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. But very yeah. inspirational indeed. Well done to you. Uh, second place this week will get themselves a GCN Cyclista bundle. Uh, this one came in from Pell Rides. Literally a breathtaking pass in Switzerland. 10 kilometers long, 4.3% average. Great preparation for the high alpine passes once the snow has melted here. That is cool, isn't it? I like that very much. Uh, the winner this week, though, winning a GCN pink elite bottle uh, and also an Italia t-shirt and a core blue sweatshirt is light burn photo with this one. Took an extra 20 kilometer loop to get to work, but the sunrise view was worth it. Wow. That is incredible, isn't it? What is even more incredible is that anyone who's been to Lanzarote in Spain and ridden that very famous road will know 
that quite often that's a horrible road to ride. And so the fact that this photo makes me want to be there is remarkable. It's a bit like taking a picture of a, <laughs> of a rainy British road at 7.30 in the morning and making me want to ride there too. I'm going to hazard a guess and say that Light Burn Photo might be a professional photographer. <laughs> judging by the name and judging by that photo. I thought you said we had a video this week. Yeah, we did. There was a middle one. Oh, of course, yeah. So I've got a still image here on my laptop, so I'll look at that later on. It's a great still image on its own, actually. <laughs> it's great. It's weird that the uh, block capital saying video <laughs> on the I just look at the photos and the names are. I ignore the rest of what you write, generally. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to get involved ready for next week's show. Just submit your photos or videos in block capitals onto the GCN app. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we will start with the news that two of cycling's biggest stars couldn't convert their scintillating road form to mountain biking. Du, du, du. Yeah. Bit harsh, perhaps, though, Si. Well. Uh, Tom Pidcock and Matthew Van der Poel finished fifth and seventh, respectively, at the first round of the Cross Country World Cup in Germany at the weekend, and Pidcock came from the 11th row in about 1,000th position, <laughs> uh, and did so, to do so was really quite impressive and almost unprecedented, I think True. to say. Yeah, I was kind of more taking the piss out of us, perhaps, for hyping them up so much. Um, but it was a super impressive ride from Pickup. But Van der Poel, perhaps, a little bit overconfident, maybe, attacking from the first lap, then completely blowing, leaving himself quite a lot of work to do after he managed to recover. But uh, If yeah. I was Van der Poel, I think I might be slightly overconfident on yeah. a few occasions. Did you see him not warming up? before the short track. That was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, former world champion Pauline ferron Prevost finished second in the women's race behind her compatriot Loana Lecomte in her first Elite World Cup. Yeah, former world road champion, we should say, current cross-country mountain bike champion. Uh, anyway, uh, elsewhere in more familiar territory, Filippo Ganna bossed the opening prologue time trial at the Giro and Tim Merlier won the sprint on stage two. A reminder that you can watch uh, short highlights for free on the GCN Racing YouTube channel, but remember we've got worldwide live on-demand and ad-free coverage in all GCN Plus territories, except for if you live in Latin America or New Zealand. Yeah, I can't apologise enough for having to mention New Zealand as not having coverage for pretty much every race, but it's basically because Sky New Zealand have exclusive rights to a lot of the bike racing over there. Uh, anyway, staying with the Giro d'Italia though, briefly, because EF Education Nippo usually race in pink kit, and so they've had to change to an away strip for this year's Giro d'Italia. Hot or not, Si? Hot. I like it very much, actually. I think it's very cool. Dan, yeah. what about you? Well, I gave it a nine, out of ten, nine and a half out of ten in commentary the other day. I'm upgrading that to a full ten out of ten. I think it's really, really stylish, that kit. Yeah. What about um, Israel Cycling Academy? Because they've got a new one, too. Yeah, nine out of ten for me on that one as well. Oh, yeah, I like that as well. Quite like Ineos a couple of years ago. Yeah, similar colour, isn't it? It is. But anyway, no. we are digressing now. We are, yeah. Uh, but sticking with that same team, EF Education Nippo, we are being given an exclusive insight into the recovery scores of a couple of their riders. That will come courtesy of Whoop, and we'll be using it to add a bit of extra context to our racing analysis over the three weeks. Yeah, so recovery scores and Whoop data generally um, is, for those that don't know, generated by a wearable device which records a whole bunch of things, uh, and then the Whoop app crunches the data and gives you some fantastic metrics, like how much daily strain you've been under, how well you slept, perhaps most interestingly, how well recovered you are, and it's frighteningly accurate, isn't it? Yeah, expect to see graphs that go like this Boom. as the Giro progresses. Although actually, recovery stats, I think, were a little skewed by stress on the opening day, by the looks of it. Team average, which is 45%. Yeah, not how you'd want to start a Grand Tour. I can not imagine. really. Uh, I'd like the inside scoop on that one. Um, in fact, we'll get it, because we do have a video planned towards the end of the Giro, right here on GCN, uh, where we'll dive into all of that data, so it should be good. Uh, one last bit of race news before mm -hmm. we move on to other topics. Uh, Africa has just been awarded the 2025 Road Cycling World Championships. First time for the continent to host it. Um, not sure which country yet, but it seems like it might be Rwanda. Well, hopefully it will be, given what we saw in our highlights of that very race last week, because those cobbles around Kigali, the capital, and the Muda Kigali, 
they'd be quite amazing seeing the world's best rides around there with all of the fans. Yeah, yeah that is awesome, isn't it? Uh, right, moving on, Ru Wick Raman Singh has reached out and provided the following details on the world's largest group Strava art plans, uh, which is to be a bike ride spelling out Refugees Welcome in giant letters across the bottom of the UK. Yeah, it's being run in collaboration with Thighs of Steel, which sounds exciting doesn't in it itself, just, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, for all of you who live nowhere near the UK, let alone the south of England, they are encouraging that we all trace a heart with GPS data to show support for refugees and displaced people across the globe, which would be a really nice gesture. I think, I think it would, wouldn't it? it? Yeah, uh, middle of June is the, is the time available. Uh, if you're within reach of the south of England, then you can get in touch with them uh, for more intro, info, rather not intro, on how uh, to take part and contribute. Just be careful when you're Googling thighs of steel. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I didn't do that one. Anyway, after falling out of love with her passion for rowing as a student at Cambridge University, Hayley Simmons was looking for a new sport in her life. And we caught up with her recently to make a documentary. It was kind of at a crossroads, really. Turns out, She's rather talented when it yeah. comes to riding and racing a bike, and since then she's won multiple national titles. It's a great little film, and it's out right now on GCN Plus. So if you have a subscription, make sure you check it out. Yeah, second GCN Plus film dropping this week is called Trailblazers with Jenny Graham. Basically, a celebration of women cycling, particularly some of the most influential women over the course of cycling's history. So going right back a hundred years or so, and it's brilliant. It's fascinating to watch as well, particularly about how the humble bicycle actually helped with the emancipation of women. I mean, it, remarkable really, but mm. you've got to watch it, it's brilliant. Should we have a little clip? Yeah, let's go for it. Back in the 1890s, there were some trailblazing women who bucked the trend and took up bike racing. Those first people that took to the line, they opened the door. When women started to race, they were really the pioneers and it was a much more interesting sport to watch because the women could go a lot faster. Hack, forward slash, bodge of the week now, and we'll start with a video. It says video in block capitals. Massive letters. <laughs> it came in from the shoe doctor. I've got a, um, a hint here that he might be doing something to do with shoes. And yeah. very good at it as he is too. Uh, check this out, repairing a badly crashed, damaged Shimano S-Fire and making it look new again. Uh, I repair and customise shoes, there you go. I was asked if I could repair these ones. I jumped at the opportunity because I love a challenge. Complex repair, having to repair inside and outside of the shoe, making it as seamless as possible and then matching the colour. Well. You are indeed a shoe doctor because that is a mighty fine job. It's a hack from me. Well, yeah, it's a hack from me, but it's so good, I almost wonder whether there's a bit of trickery going on here. You do say at the bottom of your post, um, I got so into the repair, I forgot to record each step because um, I don't know how you've done that. Do you think it's like a, here's one we made earlier? Uh, basically, yeah, it's like, here's a crash damaged shoe and here's a brand new one <laughs> and I'm going to pass it off as my own handiwork because um, I am the shoe doctor, after all. Uh, no, I... I I jest, I'm sure you have done it. I just think that's incredible. It is amazing. I applaud yeah. your handiwork. Don't throw your old shoes out, send them over to the uh, the shoe doctor. Fair play 86% for reading it. of people went for hack. Sorry, Dan, fair play for reading it as the shoe doctor as well. I just I thought you were going to call it like the. The shoe DR. Or the sh show, sh show eater. <laughs> shoe Something like that. But anyway, this, there we this go. one comes in from the shooter. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, moving on. It's a hack, isn't it? Yeah. Undoubtedly. Right, yes, moving on. Second uh, hack slash bodge this week is sent in from. Uh, uh, Taylor J. Belge, a DIY training desk. Look at that. I built this training desk out of scrap lumber uh, and uh, recycled screws from my father-in-law's garage. It looks like, I don't know, it looks pretty industrial. Mm. That looks uh, like slightly lumbersome to me. Yeah, no, I like that though. Everyone needs a good training desk like that. Mm. Um, um, not bowling me over, but yeah, decent job. <laughs> I, to be honest, I feel a little bit similar, yeah, but I mean it is, it's, it's used scrap lumber, recycled screws, Yeah, you got you get points for that. It's, it's Ron Seal, isn't it, as we'd say here in the UK. Yeah. Um, even though it doesn't say anything, so it doesn't really work either. Anyway, 64% of people won't have hacked for that one. Uh, I'll go hack as well. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely just... not a bodge, is it? No, it's well, not, it's it just... can't be a bodge. Uh, yeah. Moving on to this one from Evan Brom. A uh, quick release stem for next to wall storage. I needed to store my bike in my office near the wall, so I made a quick release turning stem. Oh my God. I don't, I mean, there's no reason why quick releases shouldn't be able to hold your wheels in 
um, and yet they make me feel very nervous attaching your stem to your well, bike. But, I, um, when I looked at this initially, I looked like, oh my goodness, that looks dangerous. But the fact that a quick release can hold a saddle up with 100 kilos on it, there's not many forces, are there, going through the steering uh, no. tube and, and the stem. And you've got so two on there. Yeah, so you should be safe. So in that, for, the, for that reason, I'm going to say hack. Yeah, no, I'm going to say hack as well. I'm going to get over my initial fear. Um, do you know what's weird though? It's because I just kind of use through axles all the time now. I do, I do like double and triple check my quick releases on my wheels when I ride um, my quick releases. Yeah. Because I feel a bit, a bit worried about them these days. <laughs> weird, isn't it? Well, 62% um, of people said that was a bodge. Didn't think it through as well as we did. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Right, this next one uh, has got a picture of a dog on it. I'm betting before I see hack. what it's about that it's going to be a hack. Yeah, it's basically like the equivalent of 3D printing, isn't it? Uh, sent in by Olin's8990. Uh, new bike mechanic. Who doesn't need their own personal mechanic? Lloyd, possibly named after uh, down here, uh, is helping me get a new wheel set put together for my gravel slash cyclocross bike. Ah, uh, no wonder it got a hack. Mm. Yeah. I want that bike for poor dog was probably there for ages thinking, why have I got to put my paw over a bike wheel? You tried to make me do it for the last half an hour now. Uh, but well done, because we're going to give you a hack, because you are a very cute dog. Uh, 85%, <laughs> as you expected, Si, uh, going with that as well. Meanwhile, Lucas Ryber, uh, 3D printed bike trailer coupling adapter. Hack! <laughs> for a spontaneous and heavily loaded bike Ooh. packing adventure, I could not get the authentic coupling adapter for my through axle in time, so I 3D printed this provisionary, uh, provisory solution, so I say. Uh, Dan, the zip ties on there. I don't know there what are, to do. But you, well, you, you've already given us your opinion, side. but I'm no. going to say that's a bodge because there's zip ties on yeah, it. Yeah, you tricked me. You tricked me because you said 3D <laughs> printing, which you know well, almost guarantees you a hack, and then it's covered with zip ties, like covered. Well, oh in the same God, way that I should have, uh, have seen your video in Block Capitals in the inspirational photo segment, you probably should have looked at the photo. All right. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, that's... Oh, God, if it's a temporary thing, that's a hack. Fair enough. Okay, you're still going to hack. Well, 70% of people went with hack, but I'm just going to say bodge because there are zip ties present. No, it's not that I don't like zip ties. Zip ties are great. It's zip ties are permanent fixtures mm. on your bike. I don't like that. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna zip tie something to your bike for a weekend, that's fine. Yeah, it's just you're fine with putting your number on your mountain bike still with it. Exactly. It's when it's when like anyway. Let's we'll not digress. We better crack on, side. We've got about three more to get. Oh through. my goodness! Right, uh, Pillover sent this one in. Uh, rubber tie to hold my brake on. Uh, Bodge. Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's not something you really want to mess around with, is it? No. Uh, holding your brake levers on, but um, well, you should have tried a zip tie. I I work. <laughs> as long as it's not permanent. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Bodge for that one, even though it got him home. 57% of other people going with Bodge as well. Uh, Ibuba, <laughs> sorry, I had to take a bit of a run up at that one. 3D printed. Well, I would say hack, but I've just looked at the photograph. <laughs> 3D printed bike ride. I used a GPX file from Strava of my first ride on Zwift to make a 3D printed model of the ride. Not particularly fast, but I think a clever way to remember future epic rides. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Like, it's a good way to celebrate. It's unfortunate that you got the Zwift volcano in there. Which yeah, I was going to say, it looks, like... looks like something my dog did the other day. <laughs> That's what I was thinking as well. A but... walnut whip, I call that. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on? I'm yeah. going to say bodge for that just because of the shape of it. Uh, but 71% of people went with hack. Anyway, Luna <laughs> Cycle comes in next. Uh, rocker plate art. I cannot keep my rocker plate out permanently and have no easily accessible place big enough to store it, so I painted a cycling-themed picture on one I made so that I can store it on the wall without it looking unsightly. Good idea, that. <laughs> it still looks quite unsightly, doesn't it? <laughs> it just, it, it just does. Looks also, like a massive rocker plate rested up against the wall. With, with my a... mind as well, I'm thinking, you could have made that look like all sorts <laughs> <Yeah>. of things. <laughs> well, I think people have been putting these in deliberately, so I'm going to move on again before I completely lose it here. Scram oh. pop drop bars on unicycle Segway. Um, oh my word! What is that? That is remarkable, isn't it? It uh, is, yeah. Uh, um, anyway, uh, so last hack bodge post, only including this as uh, she managed to get some drop bars on it along with an assortment of zip ties. Is that all you need to know, Si? Uh, I'm going to give that a hack. 
I've never seen anything so remarkable in my life. You are so contradictory. I know. Hip Feeling like that today. Well, I'm going to go bodge with that one, uh, along with 61% of other people. Uh, yeah, thank you to Scram Pop for sending that one in, by the yeah, way. Thank you um, very much. Saying uh, uh, that was a photo taken in Taiwan a couple of years ago. Um, we do enjoy hacks and bodges, don't we? Do. They make us laugh and they make us proud because some of them are fantastic. They so do. make sure we get involved ready for next week's show over on the app. A but walnut whip, I call that. It's time for caption competition now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you've got to do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below to a photograph that we're about to give you after the results from last week where we gave you this photo. And we have a thoroughly deserving winner. We do this indeed. Week, don't we? That winner being Ramon van der Ben. Caption competition. Before you start time trialling, you might need some education first. Yeah. A clever play on words there, hashtag jealous. But yeah, well deserved that one. We'll get the bottle out to you just as soon as you give us your address on a Facebook message. Uh, si is actually going to get us started with this week's photo. Aren't really? You're giving me yeah, a shot? Yeah. Well, I was going to nick it, but you were so proud about it and um, I didn't think it was that good. So I thought I'd leave it to you. All anyway, right. it is a photo from the Giro d'Italia European champion Giacomo Nizzolo of Quebec at Assos. Going to start it then, Si? All right. <clears throat> Ride in the rain, you must be taking the piss. That is absolutely brilliant. Nobody's going to beat that, but nevertheless, we'll pick our favourite from next week's comments and give them a GCN water bottle. Did you see oh, the guy in the corner having a wee? Yeah, yeah, I can see them in the background. Yeah. I did see what you did there, yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Soon, we'll let you know what's coming up on GCN over the next week. First up, as ever, uh, what we've looked at in the comment section under the last week's uh, videos. First up, on the last week's show, Jenny Dean, cycling taught me that liking a man on Tinder purely because he is riding a bike will result in him being your husband. Now very, ha very happily married to a cycling addict like me. Well, there's a good news story. That's great, isn't one. it? Yeah, fantastic. Well done, Jenny. Uh, yeah, uh, Hebs, uh, meanwhile, cycling taught me how not to drive a car on the road, uh, which I thought uh, he got 240 likes under that comment. So um, I can see a lot of you uh, agreeing with that Well, one. let's hope Hebs does drive responsibly. Hasn't Indeed, learned how yeah. not to drive a car on the road. Anyway, underneath the tricycle side, which you loved. It was. We'll stop going on about that. Uh, Joe K, absolutely brilliant. Government should subsidise the purchase of these vehicles as well as designate, designate traffic lanes to all to encourage their use. Uh, looks fun too. Alan Hammond, I'd rather get wet. <laughs> yeah, I love the contrast there. The artful bodger, meanwhile, said there is no way Hank didn't turn heads. A crazy cyclist, non-stop shouting motivational catchphrases at himself. <laughs> and yeah, that is a good point. You would have thought on that basis that Hank probably would get a lot of looks mm. and um, people would probably sort of step away from him as well. Um, and then Dan, this next one from Fletcher Chambers. I had to pick this one. Nothing to do with cycling but size driving glasses really suit him. He might be one of those guys who looks better with glasses, which I thought was really nice. I'd imagine I do too. I just don't yeah. have to wear glasses just yet, so. And then, obviously, when I just read that again, he might say he might be one of these guys who looks better with glasses because he normally looks <laughs> rubbish. So yeah. um, I don't quite know how to say that one, that Fletcher, but... Um, we were so thanks. pleased when he put that comment in as well. He started to think about it now. The yeah. cogs are worrying his head. Was it a compliment or not? Yeah. Anyway, underneath Shimano's seismic shift, uh, Chris Drury, We've come to Suffolk. Sorry to hear that. Hope you've both recovered, is what he <laughs> finishes that off with. Uh, Larison Johnson, GCN, look at all the history. Me, I've ridden all these systems. Are you calling me old? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be fair, I can kind of like, I feel your pain because even when DR2 came out, that feels like yesterday, doesn't it? It does. It does, yeah. yeah. And go. then finally, Nat Tilano. Great vid, guys. Informative and fascinating. A great tribute to Shimano. Only a channel like GCN could pull this off. Well, thanks very much. It's not like us, actually, is it, to read out such a positive comment about our content? No. Mainly because there aren't many. Well, that's right. We found um, this one. We thought we'd put it in. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, but if, but if you want to comment on glasses, for example, we'll happily. But put please those be in. slightly clearer as to whether it is a true compliment or not. Yes. Don't leave side guessing. Exactly, anyway, yeah. coming up on the channel over the next week on Wednesday, we show you how to ride in a pace line, basically sort of a chain gang uh, that you see in a breakaway in a pro race. On Thursday, we've got the latest tech show, and I think Ollie's been looking at some custom tech and paint jobs from the Giro d'Italia. Uh, on Friday, ride more eat more. We're basically having a look at what you'd eat on your recovery days when you're off the bike or just doing a 
an easy ride. That's right. Saturday, uh, we revisit an ever popular topic, clipless pedals versus flat pedals. And then on Sunday, we've got a bit slightly different one, the domestique challenge. Just how much water could a domestique theoretically carry uh, at the Giro d'Italia? So uh, predictably, perhaps, Hank is going to do that one. Uh, but Connor as well, because he's got well, longer back, basically, so mm. perhaps he'd be able to carry more water. You need to get a big jersey, try and beat the world record. That's never going to happen for the pros anymore with their aerodynamic kit, is it? There was a record for the number of bidons at a Grand Tour at some point. Was there? There was, yeah. Anyway, talking of Grand Tours... Really? Please... Yeah, there was. Probably unofficial. But talking of Grand Tours, one so last... how many was it? Oh, I don't know. Sorry, is that what you were asking me? Well, I'm just intrigued by this world record. Well, look it up whilst I give a promo of the Giro d'Italia. I almost feel like apologising for promoting our coverage so much, but please understand this is a massive investment for us and we just hope that it's a success and that we get to give it to more of you in the future. Uh, we've got live coverage every single day. It is completely ad-free. As I said, there are territory restrictions, all GC Plus territories except for New Zealand and Latin America. And if you can't catch it live, it's on demand, there's long highlights, there's short highlights, all of them are available in seven different languages so you can just pick and choose and there's a whole heap of other content as well. Pre and post race shows with all the Shenry presenting, Brad Wiggins, Brian Smith, Magnus Baxter, Hannah Walker, Sherry Pridham and many more guests on that. So please tune in, uh, GSIN Plus subscription is still available, you can do it for a year or you can do it for a month. I confess I didn't really hear much of what you were saying no. Dan, but I have found, not the answer, there's no record on the internet of that right. particular fact. But Adam Hansen apparently took 11 bottles in less than 30 seconds, according to a video on Lotto Sudow's YouTube channel. Hmm. Not the answer so I was looking for. Maybe check Do that one out, guys. Yeah. Uh, right, I think that pretty much brings us to the end of the GCN show for another week, doesn't yeah, it? It does. It means that we'll pretty much be guaranteed a world record this time next week, won't we? Courtesy of Hank or Connor. Yes, I'd imagine so. We just need to find out what that record is. But I'm sure that Hank can beat it. Mind you, he's got to... Packing quite a lot of pecs and abs into his jersey these days, I think that might yeah. hobble in. I think Connor probably stands a better <laughs> chance, doesn't he, really? Let's face yeah. it. Uh, right, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, well, we'll see you next week. We'll do. See you later.